guys and welcome back to Reading with Mo. Today we are going to have another look at one of the shelves on my bookshelf. Today we are going to be looking at this one specifically. So mostly what's on this shelf is my Anne of Green Gables collection which if you don't already know this about me by now, Anne of Green Gables is my favorite book of all time. As well as some really nice editions of classics and a few other things as well. I'm hoping to read a couple of these books by the end of the month but we'll see I'm not really sure this is uh already close to the end of the month so we'll see how it goes we can go ahead and start off first with my Anne of Green Gables collection so first we have here this beautiful set and probably my most expensive version of all of these and this is from Juniper Books I love how they design their dust jackets I just hate how expensive they can be so that's why I really haven't purchased too many things from them but their stuff I would say is really nice quality so much design and thought and effort is put into them that they're just so beautiful their editions of books so I got the Anna Green Gables set a couple of years back as a treat to myself and this has the entire set of the Anna Green Gables series there are six books all in total my favorite one is the first one I think I've read like the second or third one a couple of times but I only actually recently within the past couple of years finished reading like the whole Anne of Green Gables series because I believe it's the last two books that were actually following the perspective of her daughter which I am just very much partial to Anne in the series. I really love her story line. I do eventually want to reread the whole series again but um, yeah as far as which perspective we're reading from I don't think I'm ever going to like her daughters more than reading from Anne herself. So the books in the series are Anne of Green Gables, Anne of Avonlea, Anne of the Island, Anne's House of Dreams, Rainbow Valley, and Rilla of Ingleside. The main design on these books is on the spines but um, I'll just pull one out to kind of show you guys what they look like. So all of them have the same cover design on them which is the um same picture that's kind of on the end here so yes this is the cover design on all the books there's some nice uh hardback editions i don't know if i've actually even read from these editions before i can't remember now if i read from them or not when i read the series i'm just gonna leave this out so it's easier to pull out the rest of the books as we go along the bookshelf so this next edition of anna green gables is so beautiful and it's especially special because it's published by um, Kindred Spirits Publishing, which is located in Kensington, Prince Edward Island, which Prince Edward Island is the uh, inspiration for the setting of the books themselves. And this book, this special edition, is based on the original first edition, which was published by L.C. Page and Company of Boston, 1908, over 100 years ago. So they kept the same original cover art by George Gibbs and interior illustrations by M.A. Claus and W.A.J. Claus. I purchased this from, I guess if you go to Prince Edward Island, they have a lot of like Anne of Green Gables tourist stuff, which eventually one day I would like to go and check out for myself. But um, until I can manage to go there, I purchased this book from them. So the next edition we have is published by Canterbury Classics, and I really love this one as well. It's really nice, it has the pink sprayed edges as well as being an illustrated edition there are um, different pictures and illustrations that go throughout the book as well next the next edition we have is this one is produced by Wordsworth editions and both of these actually um, have other books in these additional in these series I would love to buy more books by these publishers of classics but so far they're the only ones I own from these specific editions this one is another beautifully designed one this color cover illustration is says by Claire Shorrock the next book on the shelf is related to Anne of Green Gables but it's actually called Marilla of Green Gables by Sarah McCoy. This book came out a few years ago and it's kind of following the perspective of one of the characters in Anne of Green Gables, Marilla, who is one of the siblings that ends up adop that adopts Anne in the beginning of the novel. We're following her as she before the story of Anna Green Gables, so kind of like a prequel. I remember enjoying this and I mean obviously I don't love it the same way as I like Anna Green Gables but this was really cool to have something more to read set in that whole same universe. Next we have a graphic novel edition version of Anna Green Gables. This is adapted by Mariah Marsden and illustrated by Brenna Fumler. I think this is so cute. I love how the illustration style is done with this. It's a really nice adaptation of the story. Next we have a copy that, while it's probably the most beat up and ugly version on my shelves, is the most sentimental to me because I have had this edition since I was a kid. It's falling apart. 
Um, I can even write my name like in the front in this like terrible handwriting when I was younger. And this is, like I said, just falling apart. But I've read this edition the most of all the ones that I have on my shelves. I've probably read this book at least like 10 times, especially when I was younger. I would read so fast that I would read the same books I had over and over. So I read this one quite a bit when I was younger. So I will never get rid of this uh, edition because even though it's not the most like aesthetically pleasing edition. It's one that is the most uh, sentimental for me. Next we have, we're almost done with the Anne of Green Gables series. So this one is an annotated edition of Anne of Green Gables. It's edited by Wendy E. Berry, Margaret Ann Duty, and Mary E. Duty Jones. This is quite a thick edition and it has hundreds of notes that describe the real life characters and settings that Anne encounters. There's autobiographical connections, literary references, original reviews of the novel, drawings, illustrations, photographs, background essays, a chronology of Montgomery's life. Um, so yeah, a whole bunch of cool little things to help you get a little bit more into the book itself. I have read this edition before and I really enjoyed it. It's one that has pretty wide margins, so I would love to annotate this edition myself eventually one day. Like, I don't have any editions of Anne of Green Gables that I've ever annotated myself or written in or anything, so I feel like this would be a really good uh, version that I have since there are such like thick uh, margins. I could really go to town <laughs> writing and highlighting in this book. So that'll be a project one day for the future. Lastly, in my Anne of Green Gables series, we have The Landscapes of Anne of Green Gables by Catherine Reed. And this is about the enchanting island that inspired Ellen Montgomery. As well as having just beautiful pictures in here, I feel like I got to learn so much while reading this book, I loved it. I'm pretty sure I gave this book five stars and it really inspired my interest in wanting to go visit Prince Edward Island in person in the future eventually. Uh, probably not anytime soon, but it's definitely on my bucket list. Okay, so hopefully you guys are not sick of me now for going on about Anne of Green Gables for like 10 minutes, but we'll move on to the rest of my shelf, which like I mentioned before, most of these are different editions of classics. So the first one we have here is The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. I believe I read The Secret Garden when I was a kid, but I don't really remember it too much. So I definitely want to reread it. This edition is really beautiful. It comes in this nice slip case, but this is the cover. And I believe that is just such a beautiful cover design for The Secret Garden. Like this is honestly probably one of the most beautiful covers I've ever seen. And I can't wait to read this book eventually in this edition. There are illustrations throughout this edition as well. I think it's just a very well put together and beautifully designed edition of The Secret Garden. I will definitely be reading it eventually, or I guess I should say rereading it. Next we have three classics that are all from the same publisher and that would be, or no, these are all from Harper Design, but they are illustrated by Nina Lima. So I will show you the three editions individually. So I have read, um, one of these so far. I have read The Beauty and the Beast. This was the first one that I purchased and this is by Gabriel Suzanne Barbeau de Villeneuve. Probably said that very terribly. But what is so cool about these editions besides just being beautiful naked hardbacks are that they have these cool interactive elements inside and so there's like different random like pop-up things and just a lot of interactive elements to go along with the with the story itself, like these little things that um, open up and stuff. I just think they're super cute. If I had kids, I would definitely, even though I don't have kids, I feel like I get, I have these. I wanna collect all of them. I only have three so far. Eventually I want to uh, have all the classics they have in these editions, cause I think they're just so beautiful. And so then the two that I haven't read yet are, the first one is The Jungle Book by Rudyard Kipling. I will show you a little bit of what the inside of this one looks like and as well just has the interactive elements throughout the book which I love books that do that any type of book that has interactive elements I think is so cool so if you guys have any recommendations for anything I might not have heard of before definitely let me know and then the other one I haven't read is The Little Mermaid by Hans Christian Andersen and other fairy tales I'll show you what the inside of this one looks like a little bit as well just a lot of different little interactive elements to go along with the story as well as like illustrations and stuff. The next set of classics are also from the same publisher and you guys will have seen these if you watched my TBR video for the month because I did put these on there and I'm hoping to get to them. I still have not yet so we'll see there's like a week left in the month 
and these are classics reimagined produced by or published by Rockport so we have three on my shelves in these editions the first one is Edgar Allan Poe's stories and poems illustrated by David Plunkert I'll show you guys a little bit of the inside so you can see like the illustration style really definitely goes with Edgar Allan Poe's stories and stuff and then next we have um, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. This is the 200th anniversary edition. It's also illustrated by the same illustrator, David Plunker. And this one has red sprayed edges. I forgot to show you guys the Edgar Allan Poe one has this like, um, sprayed edges that look like this. <laughs> and then I'll show you a little bit of the inside so you get an idea of what the illustrations and text look like on the inside. I have never read Frankenstein, so I'm looking forward to getting to this classic. Then lastly of that set, we have Grimm's Fairy Tales, Selected Stories, illustrated by Yann Legendre. Oh, I said that right. I think of the three, this one is my favorite. I just love how it's designed and the illustration design definitely appeals to me more than the other two, but the other two I feel like really fit the theme of Edgar Allan Poe and Frankenstein. And so on the edges of this one, we have some words. It says, mirror, mirror, here I stand. Who is the fairest in the land? I'll show you guys the inside of this one so you can get an idea of what these illustrations look like. Yeah, these ones are really pretty and the books are all really wonderfully designed as well. I cannot wait to read from these editions. Okay, next we have a trio of graphic novel adaptations of some of my favorite books. So let's do this one first. This is the graphic novel of Jason Reynolds' Long Way Down, which is definitely one of my favorite books, a five-star read for me. The art is by Danica Novgorodov, and I'll show you a little bit of the inside. Long Way Down is just such a powerful novel. It's a novel told in verse. I would definitely highly recommend it to you guys. We are following a boy as he's taking this elevator trip from the top floor of his building to the bottom. Something terrible has just happened in his life that he feels he needs to avenge. And as he gets on, as the elevator stops on each stop, um, he encounters a different person from his life or his past that has an impact on him. I read this book at least I think two times and I read the graphic novel so I will definitely read it again in the future too. It's just a book I highly recommend to you guys all to read and I feel like the graphic novel adaptation really did it justice. The next two are adaptations of Octavia E. Butler's books. So the first one we have is Kindred which is one of my favorite top books of all time. So this is the illustrated version. Um, I didn't like, I would say like it was definitely interesting, like I feel like it's a good supplement to the book but I didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed the actual physical book. I don't know if it was just the um, illustration style not really gelling as much with me or what but I still think that it is a nicely produced um, graphic adaptation of the novel which if you don't know anything about Kindred it's following a black woman I believe in like the 60s or 70s, 70s in California who is suddenly time traveled transported back to antebellum south in slavery times and she doesn't know why or how this is happening but it's just a very good story I highly recommend and then the next one is Parable of the Sower, which this is a graphic novel adaptation by Damian Duffy and John Jennings. And I feel like I felt similar to the other one where I love Parable of the Sower, five star book for me, but uh, I liked the graphic novel, but like I said, the illustration style isn't like my favorite or preferable style that I like, but it still does a good job of adapting the story into a graphic novel version, and I feel like both of them were still so enjoyable to read. We're getting close to the end of this shelf. Now we have these two books which are both from the same author who is Coralie Bickford Smith. She is the illustrator of the Penguin Cloth Down Classic editions of books and so she also has a few books that she's written that are her own originals and they are of course like you would expect to be wonderfully designed beautiful books. They are really nice naked hardbacks. Um, I would say these books are more so uh, geared towards a younger age audience but I feel like other older people could still appreciate them for how nice they are and pretty much on the inside it's a an extended poem that goes through the book and it has really lo lots of illustrations in her style as you would expect it to so yes this one was the fox and the star and the other one and I have read both of these is the worm and the bird uh, I believe she has another one too. I don't have it yet, but eventually I would like to purchase it. And it is like I, the other one. It's a pretty much just like an extended poem through the book. 
with lots of illustrations. On to the last two books. The first one we have is The Betrayals by Bridget Collins, which is another one I'm going to try and get to this month. We'll see. I just got the audiobook for it as well. And this book is so beautiful. I read pre the previous book, The Binding by Bridget Collins, and I remember being very underwhelmed by it, but I still wanted to try this one and see if maybe I'll get along with this book better. We're, the setting of this book takes place at this exclusive academy in the mountains and we are following two main characters who have this bond between them and there's some sort of game that I think that's supposed to be happening. This book is very beautifully designed. It has some nice sprayed edges but also if you look underneath the dust jacket itself like the um foiling on this is so beautiful you just really don't see books designed a lot like this at all anymore so I definitely am hoping that I really love this book and that it stays on my shelves because it's so beautiful but if I don't end up liking it I'm just gonna get rid of it because I don't have room on my shelves for books that I do not like I believe I purchased this edition from Waterstones and it's a signed edition by the author so yeah hopefully finger cro fingers are definitely crossed on this that I will enjoy this one and last but not least, we have this beautiful edition of The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. It's The Bell Jar and The Collected Poems by the author. This book, I believe, I purchased from... I think I actually got it on eBay or something, but I believe it's the Barnes & Noble edition. I'm not completely sure about that, but I know it's published by HarperCollins if you were looking for the publisher, or Harper Perennial, which is an imprint of HarperCollins publishers. This book is so beautifully designed. I have read The Bell Jar before. It's been a long time. I believe I've actually read it like maybe two or three times now at this point, and eventually I will reread it, re it again in this edition, which has these nice silver foil edges, and there's all of her poetry as well. So I haven't read any of Sylvia Plath's poetry, and so I'm looking forward to getting to that as well as rereading The Bell Jar again. Uh, I don't believe I've really read it, in my 20s. I believe I read it kind of when I was younger so I'm very interested to read it now and see how my thoughts and opinions are on it if they have changed from before because I remember I think I did enjoy the book before but it's been so long since I've read it I don't remember a lot of the specific details. So of the 28 books that are currently living on the shelf there were only seven that I have not finished yet which hopefully will be a little bit less by the time this month is over. We'll see. I put tentatively four books on my TBR the three um, Rockport classics, Frankenstein, Grimm's Fairy Tales, and A Grand Poe, as well as I put The Betrayals by Bridget Collins on my TBR for the month. We'll see if I get to them or not. But overall, I am pretty happy with how much progress, reading progress, I've made on this shelf. It's probably one of the shelves that I have read the most, like, percentage of books on. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing my Anna Green Gables collection as well as the rest of these books that live on this shelf. Um, next month we'll be doing the next shelf which I think is going to be my Folio Society editions. I'm pretty sure but you know you'll see when the video comes out next month. So that's it for today. Uh, thanks you guys for watching. Um, if you want to do the normal like comment subscribe I will definitely appreciate it and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!